Hi, I'm Jared. And I'm Brad. And this week on Hood Slappers, we're going to be reviewing the 2023 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. When something amazing is created, you can always assume that eventually, down the road, a lesser version will come out and ruin everything. For example, the new Coke, Speed 2 Cruise Control. And let's not forget, the Toronto Blue Jays organization actually went with this logo for their 2003 season. However, when Toyota wanted to tamper with the RAV4, the number one selling SUV worldwide, it had the complete opposite effect. It worked out well for everyone. Toyota got another bragging right, and we got this. The 2023 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. That's right, Jared. I said that's right, Jared, and the question we have is, if the regular RAV4 is so good, why do we need a hybrid? And if the hybrid's so good, does that make the regular RAV4 irrelevant? What was that? What, the cheering? Yes, the cheering. Well, we are filming in front of a live studio <laughs> audience, Jared. There's nobody else here. <sighs> All right. I took some money from the Hood Slappers budget and got a laugh track from Amazon. <laughs> you spent our money on a laugh track, Brad? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> well, I think you're on your own with that one, Jared. <laughs> Anyway, let's look into this hybrid and see what it's all about. When looking at the RAV4 Hybrid, right away you will notice there aren't many differences between this and the regular RAV4. Length, height and width are virtually the same, and aside from a few blue highlights, there isn't much to tell you it's a hybrid. That is, until you go to a petrol station. Being hybrid, the first obvious difference is of course going to be fuel. That's right, because the numbers on the hybrid are 5.8 in the city and 6.3 on the highway, with a combined six liters per 100 kilometers. Now the regular RAV will give you 8.8 .8 in the city and 7.1 on the highway. That's all while the hybrid RAV is heavier and will give you more horsepower. Uh, but what about price, Jared? I mean, with an electric motor, you would expect to pay more, but just because it's a hybrid doesn't mean you have to pay the high bid. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> oh, that does it. There. Now can we move on? All right, all right. Hold your horsepower. Wait, I thought you unplugged it. I did. The RAV4 Hybrid does cost more money and you will pay a premium for that hybrid technology, but hear me out. I did the maths on this. The regular RAV4 starts at just over $32,000 and the hybrid starts at just over $34,000 and will give you standard features like a backup camera, a blind spot display, heated seats, a seven inch gauge display, an eight inch infotainment screen, auto high beams and dual zone climate control. Now, if you're like me and do mostly city driving and roughly 20,000 kilometers per year, it will take you maybe three years to pay for that difference in cost, strictly by driving your car and saving on that fuel. So in essence, the hybrid is kind of paying for itself. Yes, and if you're starting to think here that the hybrid is the better option, you're in good company. I mean, Toyota alone, which has sold over 20 million electric vehicles worldwide, has put more thought and energy into the hybrid. It comes with five trim levels, whereas the RAV4 regular only comes with four. But surely the regular RAV4 has something on the hybrid. What about cargo space? The cargo space between the hybrid and regular RAV is the exact same at 1,977 liters. But since I'm back here, let's talk about towing capacity because the capacity of the hybrid is more than the regular RAV. This will give you 1,750 pounds of towing where a regular RAV will give you 1,500 pounds. It's starting to see that if you're in the market for a RAV, the hybrid is definitely the way to go. But let's take a deeper look at the interior and see what's new for the 2023. As I said in our Toyota Venza review, the new infotainment screen is way better and leaps and bounds beyond what Toyota had before. It's smoother, crisper, and does more of what you want it to do. But I can't say the same about the interior of the car. You see, this generation of RAV4 came out in 2019, and aside from a small few little changes, the vehicle really remains almost 
the exact same. And it kind of looks older, especially compared to the new CRV hybrid. So my question is, why do people still buy RAVs? A few years ago, there was a research survey that involved 660,000 automobiles and their drivers. And the question was asked of them, if you could own this car for 15 years, would you? The majority of the drivers who said yes were Toyota drivers. And that tells me that those Toyota drivers are more interested in the vehicle and its longevity as opposed to the pizzazz and flair of the vehicle, because that can cloud judgment on what's good and what's not. And that's where Toyota really does well. There's a lot we like about Toyota's 2023 RAV4 Hybrid, but what is there not to like? Well, some critics say that the higher end trim levels are getting a bit too pricey. Now what we have here, this is the XLE with the premium package. And this gives you everything you need. It starts at 37,500 and the premium package is just over $2,000. This is not a bad bargain at all. Second, as Jared already mentioned, some people think it is due for a redesign, fair enough. Third though, some people think that the interior is just sort of average, but what do you really expect from a people moving five seater SUV? And finally, there's still critiques out there about how loud the Toyota is, but is that really something to complain about or just something that's easy to criticize? Well, why don't we go take it for a drive anyway? Jared, listen, do you think I could plug back in the laugh track for our in-drive segment? All right, ah, thanks. Thanks, Jared. I, I knew we could work out our differences. Aww. That does it. Boo! Boo! Well, Brad, here we are in the 2023 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. That is a mouthful. What are your first thoughts? First thoughts, first impressions, it's a remarkable car, it really is. But I would say the interior, you know, it reminds me of how your wife described you. Pretty basic. Now, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that because one of the things that I've noticed here is though the interior seems a little dated in need of a redesign, like yourself, there's certain things that old school has that like, look at the size of these buttons. I love it and it feels good twisting them. So it's like turbines. Yeah, just, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. So there's, there's plenty to love here, but it, I do agree with people that it could use maybe a bit of a paint job inside, so to speak. I see what you mean, but again, this caters to Toyota drivers. And as I said earlier, that Toyota drivers don't mind keeping their car for 15 years. I'm going, I'm over you're, 13. You're so, so now I have something to aspire to. I gotta get to 15. Case in point. So yes. coming into a car like this, Brad, yes. this is perfect for you because it's not too far-fetched. Right, no. It's, it's different than yours, but it's not gonna blow your mind. And I think that is the genius of Toyota. Yeah. They're taking those people out of their 15 year old cars and here you go, hey, this is, this is good, this is, I can relate to this. I, I can go with this and for 15 years. Yes, yes, and that's what I like about it. I think Toyota did a tremendous job, and I like how they added some rubber elements. You got a rubber pad here, a nice little uh, shelf there that's got rubber. Yeah, it nice. gives you another one over here, and even the handles, they're, they got rubber on the inside. It kind of gives you a, this sense that it's an off-road machine. It really isn't, don't right. get me wrong. Right. But it gives you that sense that it's a little more rugged than it makes itself out to be. No, that's I one like of, that, that, that's one of the I, I do like that. Mm. I also like having one here. But I will say, I was just noticing as I got in. Yep. Ah, for closing the door, I'm not a big fan of the whatever this is. Yeah. It's hard to get leverage closing the door. I like a flat. Uh, you like you know, that? Yeah. A tug. You like more of an acute angle. Yeah. As opposed to an obtuse. A windy day. This could get away from me. That's maybe. true. Well, a lot of I think Volkswagen got rid of that little. Thing that little, you yeah. put your pennies that? in. Yes, yeah, your pennies. <laughs> yes, yes. You, hold on, I got I got change here. Yeah, yeah. Second, <laughs> how much is that? What is that thing called? Not just a handle. handle. Some sort of handle that see. will store lint, pennies, yes, pennies. spilt pop. Oh, always gets in sticky in there, so and then your pennies <laughs> are all sticky. You hate handing them to the yeah. person. Yeah. You're like, maybe that's why they to, got rid of it. <laughs> maybe it's a good idea, Toyota, get rid of that. Yeah. You know, I was grateful to hear you say today 
that a lot of Toyota drivers keep theirs for 15 years. Suddenly, I feel like I found my people. You, you are. You found your people. You know. You have a group of people. Yes. Yes. Now, let me ask you this. You're a dealership. You don't want somebody keeping the car for 15 years. That's not great business. In the long term, it is. Because, you know, back, like, they're going to love it. And they're going to tell their friends about it. And they're going to tell their friends' friends and their workmates and all that stuff. How old is that car? That's a 2015. Man, that looks good. Yeah, I'll get that. You know, it's funny. I haven't told a lot of people about my, <laughs> yeah, about yeah. my car. You well, know, often these people that keep their car for 15 years have pride in their pride, car. Yeah. Pride yeah. and standards. Some right. sense of pride. Right. Right. And a level gotcha. of standards, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. But I'll tell you, the yeah. hybrid itself, what a brilliant vehicle. And we've already said that it almost looks like the regular RAV is taking a back seat to the hybrid. Yeah. And I'll give you an idea. Uh, Production-wise, Toyota is, is dedicated to building 100% more RAV4 hybrids and building 25% less regular RAVs. So okay. that, if that gives you any, any indication of where we're going with the RAV4s, that to me is huge. They are dedicated to building more hybrid RAVs and I don't know, maybe just killing off the regular RAV. We'll see in a couple years if they do something like that. Now, Jared, it's been a while since we've done this, but I wanted to point out something uh, about the RAV4. This might take the cake on the seatbelt annoying, you must put on your seatbelt. Yes. You ready? I, don't try this at home. Nope. We're safety people or professionals or something. Just don't try this yeah, at home. Yeah. All right. That does it get louder? Like mine stops after 10, 15 seconds. This seems going. That that's impossible to ignore. It doesn't slow. It's. I don't know if it'll stop. No, I I I don't I don't think it will. I don't think you are getting away with not having your seatbelt on. My Rav Four. Mine's on. You know. So, speaking of which, did they get the N double I? HCS, I top safety pick plus, IIHS. Yeah. Well, the RAV4 did get good in all the safety elements of the IIHS test. However, there was an updated review, mm. and uh, two categories they moved from good to acceptable. Oh, do tell. Well, one is the moderate overlap crash test, which is kind of hitting the corner of the car. Ah. Not just a post, but like a big brick wall or something like okay. that. And the other, I believe, was side impact. Oh. So I still, I mean, they're still acceptable. It's still a fine car, but I don't know what changed because they were good and they've updated it to be okay. acceptable. Okay, interesting. So I don't yeah, know hey, if the standard something. got higher. And ah, who knows? Again, though, probably one of those things where it's probably time for maybe a bit of a, a redesign, an upgrade? Well, I think these guys in the IIHS, I mean, they get this list of stuff that requires, you know, you're required to be a safe car. Yeah. And then when every vehicle, okay, I got it. Uh, oh, uh, now we got to come up with something new. Otherwise, uh, our jobs are useless. Uh, so they got to tweak it and they got to, you know what I mean? I think they're just looking for trouble, those guys. I see. I see. Do you think if you're sitting at, you know, some car headquarter and you get a call and, you know, somebody's like, it's Tony from the IIHS on the phone. That's like, oh, no. Nobody wants to talk to the people. He's from, like HR. Yeah, uh, okay. He's the HR it can't, of the car It can't community. be good yeah. if Tony's calling. Yeah, we did um, another side impact. <laughs> and found it, the door handle moved this way mm. not this way which it should <laughs> under our safety yes. standards now how fun though do you think do you think tony at the ihs there is a boring fellow i mean you're crashing cars all day long that can't be too that's got to be kind of fun well it that, is but know? they got to give those those jobs to boring people because otherwise if you give it to fun guys they'd be having a little too much too fun. much fun a focus much. on the fun you can't, you can't be having a party yeah at the crash site or if it was me or you, Ooh. oh, awesome. Ooh. That's true. That cool. could be trouble. Oh, yeah, we didn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sorry, what were we watching <laughs> for? Yes.
Well, as the old song goes, anything a RAV can do, this can do better. It's faster, it's stronger, it's more fuel efficient, and it only costs a little bit more than a regular RAV4. I mean, this is truly a vehicle where something good has been made even better. And Toyota continues to stir the hybrid cauldron, offering people more innovative ways to travel. The RAV4 joins Toyota's growing fleet of hybrid vehicles that allows you to get the car you want and save money while doing it. And with that, I give Toyota's 2023 Hybrid RAV4 my hood slap of approval. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. A big thanks goes to our friends at Forbes Waterloo Toyota for allowing us to use this 2023 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. If you want to order one, go see them at 300 Weber Street North in Waterloo, Ontario.